Naruto is filled with villains you can name. Nagato, Madara, Black Zetsu, Obito. And while all of these villains are incredible, some of the most powerful and influential villains in all of Naruto lived in the shadows and may or may not even be considered an actual villain in the grand scheme of things. Naruto is a relatively straightforward anime with not a whole lot of nuance. One of the few places that nuance does exist is the Konoha leadership, specifically how Konoha is led and by who and what the opinions of those that are in charge actually are. You see, we all know that the person who's really in charge is the Hokage, but the Hokage does sit on a council, the Konoha Council, which at some points has been four people and is currently six. And this Konoha Council has the same amount of prestige, power, and respect within Konoha as the Hokage. So who are the members of this Konoha Council? How did they get their positions and what power do they really have? Well, we'll answer all those questions and more in a second, guys, but please, first, for me, like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noti bell. And while you guys are at it, go ahead and follow my other page, The Weeb Commander, where I talk all anime that isn't Naruto. And, uh, yeah, it hit 50k before the end of the year, so I do have to get a tattoo that says I Heart Sasuke. But I never made a rule that says I couldn't get this tattoo covered up, so I'm gonna get it covered up unless, of course, the page hits 75k by the end of the year. Always give yourself a back door. So the Konoha Council, shady elderly members of Konoha that have once had leadership positions, seemingly making the worst possible decisions for Konoha, Ever. But how did these council members get their role in the council? Better yet, who are these council members? And genuinely, how much influence do they have over the decision the Hokage makes? First, I believe it's best to talk about in generalities what the Konoha council is, and then talk about the members of the Konoha council, both in the previous parts of Naruto and in the current generation, and then touch down on how much influence they truly have on the events that happen in Konoha. See, the Konoha council, also known as Konoha Go Ikimban, which literally translates in English to Leaf Honored a Opinion Watch is a system built basically to give the Hokage checks and balances. You see, the Kage system, for better or worse, is basically a dictatorship. For the most part, it's a sole person in power who makes the entirety of the decisions for an entire village. But the Konoha Council system basically ensures that the Hokage never truly becomes a dictator. Essentially, this council was created in order to make sure that the Hokage is always acting in the best interests of Konoha and its inhabitants. That is to say, let's say hypothetically Hiruzen were to lose his mind and start making a bunch of really out-of-pocket decisions. Konoha council would act as the check and balance to make sure that Hiruzen didn't enact any harmful choices. And honestly, in a system built to have one person lead an entire village, this is pretty necessary. But here's the thing they really don't have that much power. See, all decisions are ultimately left up to the Hokage, because once again, basically a dictatorship. However, the Konoha Council is meant to give opinions to guide the Hokage towards the best possible conclusion. And the Konoha Council is supposed to accomplish this by taking all possible viewpoints into consideration. And because these Konoha Council members are the people who counsel the Hokage, they're seen in the same esteem as the Hokage themselves. That is to say, within the confines of Konoha, they're basically Hokages. And thus, any action against them would be the same as taking action against the Hokage. Sometimes, however, in strenuous situations, the Konoha Council is called upon to give more than just their opinions. In the case of a Hokage's death, they're essentially emergency leaders. And since by and large, usually a succeeding Hokage is usually chosen by the previous Hokage, should a previous Hokage die, the Konoha Council is responsible for choosing the next Hokage. Except in the case of obviously Hashirama, who was democratically elected. This was the case that we saw when the third Hokage, Hiruzen, died, and the Konoha Council elected Tsunade to be the fifth Hokage. But who are the people who sit on this council and how did they get there? Well, during Hiruzen's 50 years Hokage, there was four people in the Konoha council. It was Hiruzen, Hamura, Koharu, and Donzo. And while obviously we all know who Hiruzen is and Donzo, who are the other two? And for the casual observer of Naruto, you might only know these two as the village elders, though we've actually seen a fair amount of their backstory. See, Homura and Koharu basically have the same backstory. I think I said Hamura before, who was Hagoromo's brother. It's one letter different. Well, Homura and Koharu have been a part of Konoha since its inception. I'm not kidding. They've been there since it was founded. In fact, in the anime, when we got a look into the building of Konoha in the first days of it as a hidden ninja village, we saw Koharu and Hamura in a class with Torifu Akamichi. Now, this class was most likely the predecessor to the Ninja Academy, since the Ninja Academy wasn't made until Tobirama was Hokage. And Tobirama wasn't Hokage until about 20 years into Konoha's history. Actually, it's pretty close to 30 years, which is infuriating for so many reasons. Because according to the data books, Koharu and Homura are about 73 in Naruto Shibuden. And if they were five or six years old in Konoha's founding years, that would mean that the entirety of Konoha's history is less than 65 years, which wouldn't make 
any sense. But we know Hashirama was Hokage for at least 25 years because he met Tsunade. And him and Mito didn't get married and therefore couldn't you know, until Konoha was founded. And Tsunade is not Hashirama's daughter, it's his granddaughter. Which makes me want to scream because Hiruzen was said to become Hokage at 20, which would imply somehow that 10 years before Hashirama even died, Hiruzen became Hokage. That's not what we're talking about. That's not what we're talking about. If you want cohesive story building, watch One Piece. Where were we? Oh, yes. So Hamura and Koharu have been around since the inception of Konoha, just like Hiruzen. In fact, Koharu, Hamura, and Hiruzen were a part of the three-man team under Tobirama. And both before Tobirama was Hokage and while Tobirama was Hokage, this three-man team completed a myriad of missions. However, just because Hamura and Koharu were a part of Team Tobirama did not mean they were incredible ninjas. And in fact, Donzo in Itachi Shinden Book of Bright Light said that neither of them were ninjas of any renown, and that the only reason that they survived for as long as they did is because they found advantageous allies and hid behind them. Donzo knows this because Donzo has also been around since the inception of Konoha, and as Hiruzen's rival, he was also around Koharu and Homura. And honestly, this point is substantiated from what we saw in the First Great Shinobi World War. You see, both Homura and Koharu were a part of Tobirama's escort in the First Great Shinobi World War when he went to the Hidden Cloud, the very same escort that led to Toby Rama's death. And it was Homura who stated that the Ginkaku force had superior numbers and therefore they had no chance of winning. And it was Homura and Koharu who sat completely silent while Donzo Hiruzen and the second Hokage all offered themselves up as decoy so the rest could get away. The thought to act as a decoy never truly passed their mind. So you could either chalk this up to cowardice or the fact that they knew that they wouldn't be strong enough to hold off the Ginkaku force for a meaningful amount of time. Something genuinely only Hiruzen, Donzo, or Tobirama could pull off. However, Tobirama electing to sacrifice himself for this group turned out advantageous for both Homura and Koharu. Because Hiruzen was the first to step forward and offer himself as a decoy, Tobirama elected him as the third Hokage. And it was at this moment that essentially the Konoha Council was created. Since as Hiruzen was elected to be the third Hokage, he elected Danzo, Hamura, and Koharu to be his council members. For the first time in Konoha's history, essentially making the Hokage more of a democratic position. Since for all that we know, neither Hashirama or Tobirama had a Konoha council. Though it's entirely possible that he did, since Hiruzen so readily made the three people around him his Konoha council. But we probably would have seen remnants of either Tobirama or Hashirama's council in Hiruzen's council. So more likely than not, there wasn't a council prior. The argument for Hiruzen being the first person to create the Konoha council is even further substantiated by the fact that these Konoha council members didn't immediately have the respect and prestige that the Hokage has. It took years for people to fully understand that these Konoha council members held the same level of role as the Hokage, and thus that they deserve the same level of respect. This level of respect proved especially true for Homura, who is known to be a clear-cut and efficient leader. In combination with his long role as a leader within Konoha, he is treated with the utmost respect by Konoha Shinobi, much more than anybody else on the Konoha councilorship, except for possibly Danzo in the shadows with the root. But just because these three had joined the Konoha council did not exclude them from fighting. In the same way that Hiruzen as the third Hokage was expected to run into battle should Konoha ever be in danger, the same is expected of the Konoha Council, which is why we actually saw both Homura and Koharu in the battle against the Nine-Tailed Fox when it was released on Naruto's birthday, fighting side by side with Hiruzen. But we rarely remember or focus on the good things that either of these two have done. Because the majority of the time that we see either Koharu or Homura in the show, they're trying to be the worst people possible. Specifically, they were more acting as mouthpieces for Donzo's ideologies against Hiruzen. What am I saying? Well, even though they were close acquaintances and lifetime friends with Hiruzen and therefore should most likely hold relatively similar ideologies, Homura and Koru often sided more closely to Danzo's ideologies than Hiruzen's. And these ideologies were significantly more harsh and draconian than Hiruzen's. And there's a couple of notable examples of them siding with Danzo. Most likely the only times that you even ever remember them showing up in the show. See, when Hiruzen heard that there was dissent stirring within the Uchiha clan, he wanted to go to the Uchiha's and find a peaceful remedy. Essentially, he wanted to figure out why the Uchiha's were planning a coup diplomatically, and then find a diplomatic solution to this problem. However, Donzo did not feel the same way. Donzo saw the strength of the Uchiha as a threat against the greater good of Konoha, and that if a strength such as the Uchiha began to fester, the only idea is to cut it out. That is to say, 
eradicate the Uchiha before they eradicate us. And this was a sentimentality that both Hamura and Koharu agreed with. However, since the final say on anything that happens in Konoha does go to the Hokage, they couldn't force Hiruzen to mount an all-out war against the Uchiha, which is why Danzo had to act without Hiruzen's approval with Itachi, which subsequently got him removed from the leader of the route and the Konoha Council. The next time that we really see these two enacting their worst possible strategies is in the Pain arc. See, even though the Konoha Council was responsible for bringing in the fifth Hokage Tsunade, because at this point they were apparently in their late 60s, according to the data books, and Tsunade was 51, according to the data books. They viewed her as young and inexperienced. 17 years difference. And because they believed that Tsunade was young and inexperienced, they tried to weigh in on a lot of the decisions that Tsunade made. Even though they had been elected to the Konoha Council and Hiruzen had been elected to be Hokage at 20. To be more specific, Homura and Kaharu wanted to leave Naruto in Mount Muabuka because they knew that Nagato was coming to the Hidden Leaf to steal Naruto and therefore steal the Nine Tails and complete his Ten Tails Ghetto statue. Essentially what they were saying is that it's better to have Konoha had a lessened fighting force than risking Naruto's loss. In essence, basically saying that we can sacrifice Konoha to make sure that Nagato's plans don't succeed. All because they didn't have faith that Naruto would be able to swing the tide of the battle against Nagato. However, Tsunade, who had seen Naruto learn the Rasengan in a matter of a couple of days just to prove her wrong, did have faith in Naruto. And for good reason, because he was quite literally the only reason the entirety of Konoha didn't die including Tsunade. The true irony of all of this is that Tsunade currently sits on the Konoha Council. But then again, so do Kuharu and Homura. Yes, they're still alive. You see, the current iteration of the Konoha Council is Kakashi, Tsunade, Koharu, Homura, Naruto, and Shikamaru. And while Kakashi and Tsunade usually agree with Naruto, Koharu and Homura still don't agree with Naruto. In essence, they're supposed to represent the last vestiges of Danzo's influence in Konoha. They're very representative of a modern day issue, a bygone generation holding on to ancient ideologies that no longer apply to the modern world. And thus, through doubting a younger generation's ability to overcome the problems that they're facing, they overexert their existing power that they themselves got while they were young and trying to figure out the problems of their generation. Koharu and Homura aren't necessarily evil. They fall into a same but significantly lesser camp than Danza. People with ill-advised opinions doing what they believe is best for the world. And while obviously they weren't doing things like human experimentation and ripping out the Uchiha's eyes after he convinced one of them to massacre their entire clan, refusal to acknowledge that there might be people out there better suited to lead than you is an evil of its own. But fortunately, within the confines of Naruto, the Hokages have always risen above their opinions. Now, if only the same thing could happen in the real world. But how do you guys feel about the Konoha Council? Tell me in the comments below. And while you guys are down there, please, for me, like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noti bell. Listen, it's kind of crazy that after you become a Hokage, if you live, you just join the Konoha Council. Like, let me retire in peace.